So can you wear an Adidas boot without its laces? So can you wear a Nike boot without its laces? Damn, I killed it, it's murder. 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 Go crazy, berserker. 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 What's up guys, Blake from the Football Boots team and today, can we save hundreds of pounds by removing the laces out of these football boots? Let's find out. So the main reason why we're doing this video is because of one professional footballer. He plays for Germany and Borussia Dortmund, it's Marco Reus. And he took the laces out of his futures and that's the whole inspiration. We've got a whole bunch of boots, including the X18.1, we've taken the laces out. The Predator 18.1, no laces in them, Superfly, the Nemesis 18.1, Magista Obra DF and the Hybrid DF, Tempo Legend, Tekla and the Vapor. Let's go. So why would someone like Michael Royce remove the laces out of his football boots? Maybe it makes them more comfortable. That's what we're going to find out today. Are they going to be more comfortable? Are they going to be less or more responsive? We've got a rating for each boot with the laces taken out. So for the shooting test, for each round, each boot I test, I'll shoot some balls, I'll choose the best three and put them in the video. And as well as that, before you slate me in the comments, I'm testing how the boot feels when you're striking the ball. So I'm not going to go for anything like top bins or anything, so I'm just going to strike the ball quite nicely. So what's my overall verdict on the laces Superfly? With no laces, the double eyelets and the laces aren't doing their job. You can't tighten the upper the way you want it. Responsiveness is actually quite poor. You've got a lot of heel slippage. You've also got a lot of rollover when you're striking the ball. It's not very good at all. Its benefits is that it does have a collar, so it does help a little with heel slippage. And it has a relatively narrow last. Someone like me, I have really, really wide feet. So I think I can pull off a laser Superfly, it's not recommended. And talking about sole plates, I'm on a 3G artificial pitch here. And the Chevron studs really, really dig in. The traction is very, very aggressive. So when you've got no laces, you've got so much room inside, you're going to get blisters. It's not going to be great at all, especially with those Chevron studs. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 10. So this is a great example of why I'm doing this video. Now this is the X18 Plus, 230 pounds. 18.1, the X18.1, 180 pounds. So can you remove the laces and save 50 pounds by having a laces X18.1? So what is my overall verdict on the Adidas laceless X18.1? On my left foot when striking the ball, it actually did all right. That claw collar seen on both of these silos actually does a good job of locking the boot down. Yes, it's low cut, so it doesn't have that same effect a collar does when you're talking about heel slippage. But in terms of everything else, it's actually quite all right. Yes, you do have a bit of extra space, especially in that midfoot. When you've got laces, you can actually lock down that midfoot. You're not going to have extra space. Blisters won't be a thing. Heel slippage won't be a thing. Overall, I think you probably would prefer to have the laced X18.1. My rating for this silo is a 5 out of 10, and I'll also give a rating for the Adidas X18 Plus. I'll give that a 7 out of 10 in terms of responsiveness. Now onto one of my favorite boots on the market at the moment. It's the Nike Hybrid Phantom 3, the DF version, as well as the low, pretty much the same boot. But yes, this boot does have a wider last compared to the Mercurial Superfly, so let's see how it goes. So what's my overall verdict on the Hyper Phantom 3 DF? Now when I was shooting, I had a lot of rollover. Now these have flywire cables. The Mercurial has no flywire cables, but the Hyper does. So when you take the laces out, the flywire is not doing its job at all. And it's a wider last. I mean, it's perfect for my wide feet, but that pretty much means it won't fit everyone. 
It's good for wide feet. I fill the boot up quite nicely, but I do feel a lot of extra room in these solos. Again, the DF version would be better than the low, the Phantom 3, because it has the collar. It prevents a little bit of heel slippage. You still got heel slippage without its laces, but it's much better. So I'm gonna give it a modest rating out of four out of 10. So now onto my favorite boot of 2018 so far is the Energy Mode Predator 18 Plus and the Predator 18.1. So on my left foot, I've taken the laces out of the Predator 18.1 and on my right foot, I've got the Predator 18 Plus on. So are they the same boots without laces on the 18.1? Let's find out. So what's my overall verdict on the Predator 18.1 laces? Well, actually, it's not that great. Overall, it's got a wide last, both the Predator 18 Plus and the 18.1 have a wide last, but the 18 plus is designed to be laces. Its wrap on the midfoot is designed to be tighter than what you get on the 18.1 because it has laces, but I've taken the laces out and there's a massive difference. It's much looser on my left foot than on my right foot. So rollover, lots of internal space, especially around that heel region. The X18 plus has that claw collar. It really locks down your heel into the shoe not so much on the Knit 18.1 on the Predator. So I'm gonna give it a 4.5 on the Predator 18.1 and the 18 plus, I'll give that a seven. Now, before I get on with more boots in this video, I talk about the sole plates and stud designs of these three silos. Now the Mercurial has Chevron, very, very aggressive. And the Predator 18 plus and the X18 plus have a more of a squared hexagonal stud design, all aggressive in their own unique way. But when you're talking about studs, and no laces, it's very, very aggressive on the Mercurial. It's the blisters, the rollover, the heel slippage is just gonna be that much worse when you've got a more aggressive stud system. So now onto one of the more unique boots of 2018, the Puma Futures. These are the Puma Future 18.1s, pretty much the same boot as the Future 2.1, but overall, it has this unique external lacing system called Netfit. Now on my left foot, the laces are out, on my right foot, the laces are in, so see how they go. So as you saw, one of my failed strikes with the Futures, my planting foot just gave away. A lot of rollover, a lot of heel slippage, the collar isn't as tight as I thought it would be. Conical studs, yes, are helping, and that narrow lust will be helping as well. In terms of responsiveness and lockdown, it's not that great. I don't know why Marco Royce decides to take his laces out of his Futures. It definitely needs laces on that Netfit system. I'm giving this a three out of 10 rating. So now on to Kevin De Bruyne's Magista Obra 2 DF. Now pretty much has the same width as the Hovnam, but it has conical studs. So let's see how it goes. So what's my overall verdict on the Magista Obra 2 DF? Now it's pretty much the same width as the Hivenum and it's much, much wider than what you get on the Mercurial. So not great in terms of the extra space you get inside the boots, but it has the collar, has that compression. Heel slippage is not too bad, but you still get blisters, you still get rollover. I'm gonna give it a modest score. I and mean, it has conical studs as well, so that helps with the traction on the surface. I'm gonna give it a modest score, 4.5 out of 10. So now on to Adidas's Nemesis 18. We have the 18.1 Messi on my right, it's laced and the Nemesis 18.1 on my left foot, the orange energy mode version, which has been made laceless. Now the 18 plus has a much tighter wrap, 360 agility bandage, does a great job on the 18 plus. So let's see how it goes on the 18.1. So how do these two boots go? Well, the laceless Nemesis 18.1, it has that 360 agility bandage, but it's designed to have laces. So the lockdown is not as much as what you'll get in the 18 plus. So laced 18.1 is definitely the better way to go. It does have quite a tight wrap, even though you've taken the laces out. So it's actually not too bad. I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. So now on to the Nike Tempo Legend 7. Now this is different to all the other boots we've had in this video. Why? Because it's K-Leather. K-Leather upper and a low cut design. Let's go. Oh. 
So the Tempo Legend 7 is by far the most comfortable boot I've worn in this video. By country mile, it's got K-leather. It fits like a glove. The laced version, just it's just perfect. But the laces version obviously has that fly knit tongue, does provide a bit of compression and also has that flyaway cable. So without laces, the flyaway can't work and the compression tongue can't really work. The whole boot is pretty much pointless. If you buy a leather boot, you have to have laces. Hence why I give this a rating three out of 10. So the two bonus boots in this video is the New Balance Tecla Pro and the Mercurial Vapor 360. I'm not gonna be wearing them because they're too big for me. They're in 10 and a half UK in Maddie's size, so they're not in my pitiful nine UK size. But overall, the Superfly I gave a rating of about four out of 10. The Vapor is not gonna be any much better than that because it doesn't have that collar. So 3.5 out of 10, chevron studs, narrow last. It's not gonna do its job very well without laces. Whereas the New Balance Tecla Pro has a very, very shallow lacing system. It doesn't go far into the solo as well. So when it is laced, it's not very responsive at all in general. But when you take the laces out, which I'm not going to do, it won't be that much of a downgrade because it has that shallow lacing system. I'm gonna give it a score, maybe four and a half out of 10. So guys, I've tested a whole range of elite level solos from Nike and Adidas, but which are the best without laces and which are the worst? Well, the best won't surprise you are the 18 plus models. So the Nemesis 18 plus, the X18 plus, and the Predator 18 Plus. They're designed to be laceless. If you want a laceless boot, buy a laceless boot. But if you can't afford one, I potentially recommend going laceless on the Predator 18.1 and laceless on the X18.1. It's certainly not recommended, but if you want to save yourself 70 to 50 pounds, potentially go with the 18.1s without laces. But if you're going to buy a boot with its laces, just use its laces. Now the Nike models themselves, the collared boots, are better than the low cut models. So the Tempo, the Vapor, the Hyperdome Low, and the Majesta Low are very, very bad without its laces, but the collars actually help to prevent a bit of heel slippage. So you can wear these boots without laces, but it's highly, highly not recommended. So that's it, guys and girls. Taking your laces out of football boots is probably something you shouldn't do unless you buy an actual laceless football boot. But I've enjoyed this video, I hope you have too. Please like this video, subscribe, and please turn on those post notifications so you see every video we make. And the worst part about this, I have to put all the laces back in. So can you wear a Nike boot without its laces? I think you can. <laughs>